So distinguished colleagues, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar, Enhancing Forest Data Transparency for Climate Action. So today is an opportunity to explore the crucial topic of climate data transparency. So if we are to unlock the potential benefits of forests and tackle global challenges such as climate change, we need transparent forest data. You may ask why? Because robust, accessible, and transparent data give us a clear picture of forest cover, land use changes, and carbon stocks. When governments, NGOs, and stakeholders have accurate and transparent information, they can monitor deforestation rates and track progress towards conservation and restoration targets. So transparent and accurate data on forests extend biodiversity hotspots, ecosystem services, and other aspects empower policymakers to make informed decisions on land use planning, conservation strategies, restoration and sustainable use, and to develop policies that properly balance socioeconomic and environmental objectives. Transparent and accessible data also support the rights of indigenous peoples and local communities and their sustainable forest use and manage. Data transparency strengthens governance structures by promoting engagement and collaboration across the sectors. It is also crucial for catalyzing and incentivizing financing investment in uh, forest conservation and restoration initiatives. Transparent and, in, in, uh, transparent and incredible information on carbon stocks and ecosystem services paves the way for the financial support needed for climate action. And this manifests in a scaling up of climate ambition and action. So Dear Colleagues, FAO is committed to driving efforts to achieve the data transparency needed for effective climate action. Our collaboration with the say, Global Environment, Environment Facility, GEF, enabled the launch of the uh, CBIT Forest Project in 2019. This project has enhanced the quality, availability, and accessibility of crucial forest data in more than 20 countries, including on deforestation rates and carbon emissions. Through workshops, trainings, and fora, the project has helped develop the skills necessary for robust forest monitoring and reporting. In turn, the project is helping countries develop the capability they need to safeguard forests while ensuring climate efforts are effective and sustainable. I'm therefore delighted that the session today will introduce the next phase of uh, CBIT Forest Project. Phase two will build on our successes and enable further progress towards climate transparency. So I wish you all a productive and insightful session. Thank you very much for your attention. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jimin. For the um, next opening segment, we have Wang Shui Hong, uh, Manager of Reporting and Review in the Transparency Division at the UNFCCC Secretariat. She will delve into the critical nexus between climate change and data transparency. Shui Hong, it's wonderful to have you here with us today. Um, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Um... Ms. Chair, and it's really a great pleasure to join you for this webinar. And thank you very much for the kind invitation. It's really great to see so many uh, old friends and colleagues here. And in particular, happy to see Jimin uh, sitting on the other side uh, in, in uh, FAO uh, headquarters. Um, so uh, actually, the UNFCCC Secretariat um, contributed to the uh, to the first phase of this project of the CBIT project, and uh, we really enjoyed our collaborative collaborative 
efforts, uh, we we contributed um, by developing together the, the e-training modules, the, the knowledge products, and participating in the webinars and, and online courses. So the first phase of this project actually raised awareness on the crucial role of the transparent forest data in reporting and climate policy development, particularly for the forest sector. And I would like to congratulate FAO for initiating the second phase in a very timely manner, especially as countries now start to prepare to submit their first biannual transparency reports uh, before the end of this year, and also as parties start to prepare their second uh, NDC by February 2025. As we all know, transparency is vital for for progress towards limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees and achieving the Paris Agreement goals. The implementation of the Enhanced Transparency Framework, in short, the ETF, is a continuous journey. It helps to inform policy choices, identify synergies, set meaningful targets and goals, and build trust among countries and stakeholders. Engaging in the ETF fosters learning relationships, collaborations, and trust in global climate efforts. Transparent forest data is a critical element for building the ETF, which aligns with the recognition of forest role in climate action under the convention and under the Paris Agreement. The recent climate conference in Dubai at the end of last year emphasized the importance of conserving, protecting, and restoring nature, including halting deforestation by 2030. Despite a 9% decrease in tropical forest loss from 2022, forests still produced significant uh, carbon emissions. Therefore, addressing deforestation and addressing deforestation requires robust data and monitoring system, as Jimin just now also alluded to. So, the um, addressing deforestation actually also requires institutional arrangements and continuous improvement. So, these are areas where FAO's initiatives, including the CIBIT project, can make a real difference and impact in supporting developing country parties. So last but not the least, we believe that the regular information exchange is critical between technical teams that prepares data for the FAO Global Forest Resource Assessment, the FRA, and the technical team preparing national reports to the uh, UNFCCC process. Such exchanges will enhance the reporting of the latest data to the climate process and will result in more consistent reporting, reduced reporting burden uh, for parties, and also increase transparency. So we look forward to continued efforts and contribution by FAO in building awareness and capacity for transparent data and reporting, which in turn will support countries. ETF implementation. So thank you very much. And I wish the webinar great success. So back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shi Huang, for your insights. Um, lastly, we are honored to have with us today Shizuru Aoki, Lead Environmental Specialist for the JAF Programming Unit. Um, today, she will offer insights from the JAF's perspective, focusing on the importance of building capacities related to transparency in forest and climate initiatives. Shizuru, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start uh, by thanking FAO, especially Mr. Zimin Wu, but colleagues such as Rocio and others who are deeply engaged in this particular CBIT effort for organizing this event, and also colleagues from C and other institutions present. Um, I'm seeing over 170 people participating, so I think there's a lot of interest in this particular topic. So I only have three minutes, so let me share the Jeff perspectives very quickly on um, why we think the CBIT is important and why we continue to engage in the forest sector. 
So for the GEF, um, the CBIT is the foundation of the Paris Agreement and national efforts to track progress on the goals each and every country has established. It's all about enhancing the transparency of support as well as uh, enhance, uh, enhancing the transparency of climate action. And it's all about helping to build the capacity of national institutions. So in the very crowded landscape of climate finance and support, we think transparency is fairly unique. With the Jeff and its partner agencies present here, um, FAO as well as other agencies, they are the ones who are doing the lion's share of support to countries. So we think this is a very distinctive responsibility for all of us present here to really help build and reinforce um, the foundation of Paris Agreement and ambition, especially on this important year of transparency with the first BTR report submission. And this is something as uh, so far from uh, UNCCC just touched upon. So give you some figures. As of March 31st of 2024, the CBIT has supported 96 projects in 88 countries. And we have um, programmed almost $160 million of GF resources. We have seven out of 18 GF agencies engaged in CBIT. And that's a good thing because countries have a choice of agencies to work with. All developing country parties that have ratified the Paris Agreement can request CBIT support. And we're really happy to see more countries requesting the second round of CBIT support. There is no sunset date or sunset clause for the CBIT. So what that means is we will continue to support countries upon request. Now, let me say a few words about why we think um, renewed continued focus on the forest sector is warranted. The first reason is that uh, compared to other sectors, developing countries still continue to face challenges in reporting having reliable data on their forest and changes. And these challenges can be attributed to limited access to tools, limited technical institutional capacities and other elements. So we know we need to address this remaining barrier. Um, the second reason is that the large share of the forest and agricultural sector in the global emissions pro uh, profile. The AFOLO sector is responsible for almost one quarter, one fourth of global um, greenhouse gas emissions. And it's actually expected to increase significantly, particularly in developing countries context. So for us, as a community, getting the sector right, we think is an important contribution to enhancing the transparency of climate action on the global scale. So it's really encouraging that the CBIT Forest 2.0 will facilitate access to the best possible forest related data, which can help countries to report latest information. Let me finish um, by um, uh, sharing the good news that we're bringing back the CBIT annual global meetings. So the global, uh, Climate Transparency Forum will take place on May 21st and 22nd in Tokyo, Japan, which is my hometown. I'm very excited about that. The forum will provide for deeper dive discussions in various areas of transparency, particularly on the BTR and NDR preparations, which we all know are interlinked to processes for the C in all countries. So I hope to see many countries and institutions there and exchange experiences and in new initiatives including the CBIT Forest 2.0, as well as lessons learned from the first phase. Thank you so much for inviting us to engage and back to you. Thank you, Shizuru. Um, and thank you um, to all the other opening speakers for, for opening this event and for your insights as well. Um, before we dive into our panel discussion, um, I want to remind everyone to utilize the chat function for comments and the Q&A box for any questions you might have to the panelists or um, to um, our um, opening speakers, because we will have um, them until the end of the session or representative from, from representatives from the organizations answering these questions um, throughout the event. Uh, so please ensure to specify the name of the speaker you are directing your question to, um, so we can facilitate um, an effective response. Um, now let's uh, transition into our next, next segment, the panel discussion featuring uh, representatives from our partner countries, as well as organizations working closely 
on forest data transparency. Um, allow me to quickly introduce um, our panelists. First, we have Jose Armando Alanis de la Rosa, manager of the National Forest Monitoring System at the National Forestry Commission CONAFOR in Mexico, um, currently serving as the chair of the Latin America and the Caribbean National Forest Inventory Network. Uh, Jose Armando is committed to promoting technical cooperation and transparency in forest-related data across the region. Um, next, we have Peter Nduati, Deputy Chief Conservator of Forests at the Kenya Forest Service. Uh, with over 20 uh, years of experience, Peter has played a key role in sustainable forest management and community involvement in Kenya. Uh, he's been actively supporting plans for community-led uh, forest management and working closely with local groups on projects like mangrove protection, red plus readiness, and the establishment of Kenya's National Forest Monitoring System. Um, joining us as well is Julian Fox, Senior Forestry Officer and Team Leader for Forest Monitoring and Data Platforms at FAO. Um, with over 20 years of experience in forestry, Julian has worked in various developing countries managing forest monitoring projects. Um, and in his current role, um, Julian oversees FAO's global forest monitoring efforts. Um, and last but not least, we have Pascal Martinez, a Senior Climate Change Specialist at the GEF. Um, with a career uh, spanning over two decades, Pascal has been deeply involved in environmental projects focusing on forests and agriculture. And currently, Pascal leads GEF's efforts um, in supporting developing countries to meet their environmental commitments, particularly in sustainable forest management. Um, welcome to all the panelists. Um, and let's start with a question to, um, to Kenya, to Peter. Uh, Peter, Kenya Forest Service um, plays a crucial role in conserving, restoring, and sustainably managing forests. Um, can you elaborate on how the National Forest Monitoring System and its data are helping KFS to, to fulfill its mandate and how forest data is effectively utilized within the country? Peter, the floor is yours, thanks. Let's give it a couple of seconds for the connection. I audible now. Peter, can you hear us? Yeah. Um, we're having, maybe we can come back to this question um, later. Um, unless Peter, just one last check. Could you, can you, can you hear us? Can you? I can, can hear you, you clearly. Oh, perfect. Okay, we can hear as well. Have you heard my question? I think we're having some connection issues. Um, maybe we can pass to the second question and come back to this one right after. Um, in this case, let's cross the globe uh, to Mexico uh, with a question to Jose Armando. Um, Jose Armando, could you elaborate on why transparency in forest data is considered crucial in Mexico um, and how does ensuring transparency uh, contribute to the effective management and conservation of forests within the country. Yes, thank you, Maria. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well. Okay, thank Over you very much. You. I, I'd like to express my gratitude uh, on behalf of the Mexico's government and also from the National Forestry Commission for the invitation to participate in this webinar. We think that it's very interesting that we could um, share our points of view about, about how um, Transparency in forestry data is important to sustain uh, uh, management of our uh, forest ecosystems uh, all over the, the world. So uh, let me start by saying that uh, uh, the National Forest and Soils Inventory, which is the our main uh, 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 set of information about the forest ecosystems in Mexico, it is a critical resource uh, for informing the management of, of our forest in, in our country. It provides information about 
key aspects of the ecosystems uh, in Mexico, including, for example, timber volume, biomass, carbon uh, stocks, the growth rates, and biodiversity, biodiversity, among other relevant indicators. Uh, it is important to say that the National Forest and Soils Inventory is part of a bigger system of uh, national uh, information that is um, integrated into the national system of statistical and geographic information, which ensures the quality and scientific consistency of all the information that is uh, integrated into this system. And also uh, the National Forest and Soils Inventory was determined as a information of national interest because it generates information, data sets at, at indicate, and indicators at national level that are related to the environment and natural resources and vegetation. And also it's uh, information that is necessary to support the design and evaluation of public policies of national scope. Uh, it's also information that is generated on a regular, regular and periodic basis. And is also prepared on, on the basis of scientifically supported methodology. This uh, information is important uh, for the country to support the design and assessment of uh, national policies and programs related to, this, uh, to the promotion of national forest uh, management in, in, in our country. It is important to say that uh, the information from our forest inventory empowers our country to design targeted strategies and programs for implementing sustainable forest management. This includes, for example, uh, support to focus uh, or programs on protection, conservation, and restoration on forest ecosystems. For example, uh, the National Forest Invent Inventory provides data that help us to focus the programs to promote sustainable forest management based on the identification of uh, the pro productive potential of our forest using indicators that such as uh, dominant and average height, stand density, or average annual growth that help us to uh, focus on those forests that are more productive to promote sustainable forest man management. It also help us by identifying areas with high conservation values, high carbon stocks, or high deforestation risk. And, and then we can focus uh, much better and optimize the, the national program for payment of, for environmental services, increasing its efficiency and effective effectiveness. Uh, and also uh, information from the National Forest Inventory has helped us to recognize the vital role of forest in mitigating climate change in, in, in Mexico. And that's why uh, cl um, uh, conservation and, and restoration of, um, of forest ecosystems in Mexico, it's very important to achieve our commitments under the Paris agreements related to uh, mitigation. Uh, Information from the National Forest Inventory and Soils and uh, has helped us also to produce our national forest, uh, I mean, to support our national forest monitoring systems at national level, and has, has been helping us also to facilitate the formulation of the crucial reports and, and like the forest re emissions reference level, and also our red uh, results technical annex. These two uh, documents or, or has been used information from the National Forest, Forest and Soils Inventory to produce um, an assessment of, of an, an, an accounting of uh, greenhouse gases emissions in the forestry sector, and also to demonstrate the achievements of the national government in Mexico to reduce deforestation and forest degradation in the period 2017 to 2019. And also, uh, we are now in, intended to produce the next report for 2020-2022 to also demonstrate uh, all the, the achievements in reducing deforestation and forest degradation. The information from the National Forest Inventory has been very, very important to produce all the information related with uh, emission factors particularly on also the activity data to uh, uh, formulate these two documents that has been assessed by the UNFCCC uh, following the, proced the procedure established by, by the, the, the COP. Um, I can say also that uh, uh, Mexico is committed with transparency and following the mandate of the president of Mexico and our uh, director general at CONAFOR, 
all the data of the National Forest and Soils Inventory is published online uh, in, in the framework of our National Forest and the Information System, ensuring that uh, public uh, access and, uh, is guaranteed for everybody, everybody and also promoting uh, the use of this information for decision makes, making in, in Mexico. And, and, and this is uh, in, in, in order to, pro, to comply with the provisions of the federal law of transparency on, and access to public information. Finally, I would like to say that under the CB Forest Project, we are uh, committed also to contribute to the efforts of FAO to compile information of our national forest uh, inventory through the Food and Agriculture uh, Microdata Catalog. And uh, again, thank you very much. And I expect I uh, give an answer to your, to your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose Armando. It is um, it is inspiring to to hear about the important progress um, being made in Mexico to enhance um, enhance forest data um, collection and transparency um, as well. And while um, developing the national forest monitoring systems, uh, many countries in in the world have received support from FAO, um, an, an organization that has more than 40 years of experience in, in monitoring forests. And Julian, I think you can sense that my next question will be directed at you. Um, please, could you tell us with FAO's experience um, in supporting countries through this process, the forest data collection, management, and reporting, um, what capacity development approaches do you find most effective in, in empowering various stakeholders to, to participate in and utilize transparent um, forest data systems? Julian, over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Maria, and really nice to be with you all today. So yeah, as Maria said, um, we've been been supporting many countries on forest monitoring actually for, for almost 75 years as FAO. But I'd say in the last 10 years, we've seen a real shift in the ability of countries to create good forest data. And CIBIT Forest Phase 1 was actually an important part of that progress. And I'll, I'll focus on two elements that we as FAO see as really critical in transforming, I'd say, forest data and, and transitioning to the ETF. The first one is, um, is really having all the technical solutions been fully open and transparent. And uh, I think uh, 15 years ago as FAO, we, we started developing technical solutions for forest monitoring um, that were fully open source. And this is, this is really important for, for countries and anybody to understand what, what is generating the data and also to enable countries to generate their own data. And I'll put in the chat a few links because in fact, over the last five years, we've seen, we've seen a real shift in, in the quality of forest data and particularly being submitted to the UNFCCC through forest reference emission levels and red plus technical annexes. And we put, a, put out a publication on, on International Day of Forest that, that charted this progress very nicely. And the, the really important contribution of open source technical solutions and uh, as FAO, we, we created a platform 15 years ago called Open Forest, and it basically has open source solutions for all parts of forest data collection, creating a database and for reporting. And it's been really powerful and quite a success story for us that so many countries have used it. Um, in fact, it has democratized, I'd say, the way people create forest data. We have almost a quarter of a million people using the platforms. Um, from 196 countries, which is really remarkable. And 90% of the forest reference emission levels to the UNFCCC have also used this, this software. So that's a lot of information, but that is really has been a game changer for FAO. And the second game changer is the way we build capacity has changed a lot. And uh, actually, thanks to the work of Rossio and Civet Forest Phase 1, we've really started pioneering um, e-learning approaches which can, I think, enable the transfer of capacity to many more diverse stakeholders than traditionally forestry has supported. Forestry capacity development traditionally has focused on workshops in countries with government technicians. But by creating open e-learning um, material, all stakeholders can engage in this. And this is essential, I think, for transparency and for building trust across across. Um, parts of, of countries from governments to indigenous peoples to the youth and particularly a big success for us for, for the e-learning has been the engagement of women 
because a lot of women in, in developing countries and everywhere are very busy during the day. And, and if we create a resource that allows them to build capacity in their own schedule, we've actually seen a huge increase in the, in the number of different um, stakeholders, including women, actually building their capacity and helping, helping transform and um, work toward really transparent and trustful uh, forest data. So those are, those are um, two key bits, and I'll, somebody's already put it in the chat, but I'll add some more links. And uh, thanks so much, Maria, back to you. Thank you, many thanks, Julian. Um, in a lot of um, forest monitoring efforts led by FAO, um, the JAF has been a long-standing st partner. Um, and my next question will be directed at Pascal. Um, Pascal, the JAF plays um, a crucial role as a provider of financial support for reporting and the implementation of the Enhanced Transparency Framework under the Paris Agreement. Um, could you elaborate on the specific efforts JAF has um, undertaken to support transparency and capacity building um, at the national level? Over to you, Pascal. Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, thank you very much also for the, this uh, invitation to this very important uh, event. I'm very pleased to, to have this opportunity to share what we have been supporting and doing so far on this uh, this regard. Uh, yes, the GEF is as a financial mechanism of the of, of the, the, the climate convention. It's a uh, very uh, well positioned, of course, uh, to to support countries and their or their uh, reporting obligations. And uh, <clears throat> maybe I would I like to. Um, I was supporting three different fronts. The uh, first is a uh, reporting to UNFCCC, uh, obviously, of course. Uh, the GEF uh, supports developing countries in preparing and submitting their reporting obligations to the convention. In particular, uh, the GEF has mainly been seen as provider of support to one, the national communications, and also what we call uh, called <laughs> BNM, biennial uh, update uh, reports, which is now replaced, uh, being replaced by the BTR, biennial transparency reports. Uh, second uh, support, and this is what uh, put us here together, it's uh, the CBIT, Capacity Building Initiative for Transparency. And this can be at national level. We are now speaking about one uh, global uh, approach, but we have been supporting mainly the countries at national level uh, in the um, with, through the, the CBIT. You know? um, as my colleague uh, Shiluzuru mentioned, uh, the GF supported many CBIT, uh, CBIT projects so far, uh, and nearly 100 since uh, its inception uh, in, in uh, 2016. Um, the GEF uh, support encompassed all the geographic regions, Latin America, Caribbean, and Asia, Africa, Europe, uh, Central Asia, including also SEEDs and LDCs. Uh, so far, uh, we have uh, 17 projects, I think, uh, that have terminated, finished implementation to date. <clears throat> but we have many others that are running. Uh, we have had uh, 44 projects in GEF 6, uh, the same number in GEF 7. Now we, are, we have eight projects approved in GEF 8, and we we'll continue to uh, improving this uh, new new project now, but yeah, there is a specific case for the Afaru sector definitely, uh, and uh, because it's a it's a quite big share of all the project that we have with uh, project proposal that we have received so far. It's about forty two percent, roughly close to half of the project. So it it's a one fourth of the emissions, but it's uh, nearly half of the of the project that we received. So it's the Afaru sector is. Is a very particular and very important for uh, for our, um, uh, the countries that we are uh, we are supporting. No? And uh, yes, the choice of the sectors are normally driven by the share of em emissions sector in the national uh, GAG inventories. But uh, still, it is very important to to, to highlight uh, the importance, relative importance of uh, of the AFOLU. And then we have a third uh, pillar of our support is. Uh, the global support program. No, no, so it's not specifically to one specific countries, but globally, because uh, this global approach provides a space for sharing of lessons learned, knowledge exchange on how to address common reporting issues to comply with the ETF. No? And there's this global program. We have been supporting uh, seven CBIT global projects for about $19 uh, million, uh, uh, of which uh, 7.5 has been allocated to the AFOLU sector, half AFOLU project, CBIT AFOLU project, half forest project. And in both sides, both sides, uh, 
for two phases uh, of the project of this project, and now we are just beginning the second phase of uh, of the forest one. So the rest, uh, uh, the rest of the global support has gone to to different uh, project uh, which focus on uh, other priorities areas, including other mitigation sector adaptations or means of implementation, etc. And, and specifically on forests, uh, I think that dealing with life and nature and having at the same time a crucial role to play in the global uh, climate strategy, uh, the forests are very specific in climate change arena. And I'm very pleased to 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 hear from our uh, friend from, from from Mexico, uh, Jose Armando, uh, mentioning the importance of biodiversity and conservation. It goes the forest data goes beyond even the climate change uh, agenda. So for us, as, as the uh, financial mechanism of the Rio conventions, including biodiversity, is very important to 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 see this um, the specific also specificity of the of the forest uh, data. So we expect that this new global forest CBIT uh, project will develop capacities to ensure sustainability and transparency of forest reporting work through innovative global learning programs, uh, sharing knowledge regarding forest and transparency, and also develop networks regionally. And this is important also to share experience, not only globally, but regionally. Uh, with the new the new partners also with like uh, the academia the, the, the this new phase of the forest uh, global forest uh, project uh, will build on knowledge obtained at the level global level including the first phase and also there is this important link with as it has been mentioned the the, um, the national network of fra and the global work of fra this is very key also uh, so we expect that countries will be better uh, equipped uh, uh, to address the specific challenges posed by the ATF in the forest sector in terms of reporting requirements. And as we say at the Jeff, I will finish like this because it's, I could say much, but uh, uh, our program, programmatic approach uh, leads to greater impact as compared to the sum of the part of a program. So it is not a program per se, a Jeff program per se, but uh, articulating this specific global platform through this project uh, with the work that is being done at national level, it works like a, what we call a program at the Jeff. And, and this is important for us because this is a key to, to enhance uh, the impact that we can have going much beyond that if we would have worked only at national level. So this is what I had to say to respond to your question. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Pascal. Um, um, actually, related to what you have said about the ongoing work in Mexico and the importance of sort of creating this regional um, regional collaborations and regional initiatives networks. Um, thanks to the Jeff funding in the past and now um, FAO has been supporting the, the work of the National Forest Inventory Network in Latin America and the Caribbean, um, which aims to promote the, um, the creation, improvement and harmonization of national forest inventories in the region. And um, um, Jose Armando, currently Mexico, is holding the presidency of the network, um, and your your leadership position offers a, a unique perspective here. Um, maybe my, my question will go to you next. Uh, could you highlight some um, some practices from your region that have enhanced forest um, data transparency? Um, mentioning the work of the network and what has been done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I'm with the Latin America and the Korean Forest Inventory Network is a voluntary and non-binding non -binding associ association of countries, institutions, managers, experts, and all other collaborators on the National Forest Inventory in the region uh, aimed to promote the development and strengthening of, of national forest inventories. Uh, uh, the idea is to support uh, this uh, uh, capacity building efforts and uh, promote exchange, uh, technical exchange of, of the, the participants so we can help each other to uh, increase our knowledge about uh, how to implement uh, national forest inventories and how to use this information in the decision making processes. So um, I, I would say that also that uh, this uh, network is based on uh, the long uh, tradition of collaboration among the countries of the of, of the region and also um, uh, is supported by the uh, by FAO and other institutions that are very relevant in terms of of uh, uh, capacity building and technical exchange and scientific development in the in the region uh, i would say that one of the the uh, main results of this uh, collaboration so far has been uh, the the formulation of a book 
on, on the National Forest Inventories of the Latin America and the Caribbean that was uh, um, published in collaboration with the FAO, the Federal University of Amazonas in Brazil, the Forestry Institute of Chile, and also the National Institute for Agriculture, uh, Food Research and Technology of the Spanish National Research Con Council. And in this book, uh, we compile information from 21 countries on the history of importance of the respective national forest inventories, describing with very much detail uh, the methodologies of, for data collection and the measurement of most relevant uh, forest in the indicators. Uh, in, in, in this book, we ex examine the, the similarities and differences in the design of national forest inventories, the challenges and opportunities for their implementation and what is uh, uh, expected for the, the future. Uh, we have no doubt that this publication represents a milestone in, in the process of harmonization towards uh, data transparency in the forest sector in Latin America. And, and, and this book has become a reference for consultation on the subject of national forest inventory and at national level. So I could, could say that this book is uh, one of the, the key elements of the, uh, uh, produced by the collaboration of the, of the countries. And so far, uh, the, the, the network is already working on the harmonization of some uh, key variables of uh, forest in the context of the Global Forest Resource uh, Assessment, uh, the FRA, which is aimed to facilitate uh, the consistent estimation, reporting, and, and comparison of indicators such as volume, biomass, and, and forest carbon, carbon stocks uh, across uh, the region. So we have initiated a collaborative work uh, that is focused on systemat systematizing all the information about, uh, for example, emission factors that have been used uh, by some countries in the region to estimate um, uh, greenhouse gases emissions and, and, and removals in the forestry sector to support other countries uh, to meet the reporting requirements under the enhanced transparency framework of the Paris Agreement. So I think that is very important that compile that kind of information that is available available in many countries to support other countries that has not much information as some other countries have. So I think that uh, also this network is very important to promote capacity building, as I, I mentioned uh, before, and, and also to take it um, advantage of, of of many of the recent developments and and that has been related with technical and technology uh, in, in the forestry sector for collecting data and, and analyzing this data from uh, different sources, particularly information that is related with remote se remote sensing and trying to integrate this information with field information uh, that is provided by the National Forest Inventory to uh, enhance our capability to, to uh, measure the changes in, in, in the forestry sector related, for example, in this case with biomass or carbon stocks. And uh, also, and recently we are uh, focused on, on exchanging or experiences and knowledge about how to use other approaches for collecting data. For example, we are very interested in how to promote participation of, of participa participation of local communities on collecting data and, and what we call and which we call the uh, um, community of based forest monitoring approaches and and also by the use of um, um, mobile systems and devices to ensure uh, data quality during during the the, the field work. I think that uh, um, the National Forest and Inventories Network of Latin America and the Caribe exemplifies uh, how uh, uh, collaboration can help us to advance on sustainable forest management by providing information that is uh, relevant and, and, and is based on the on the on the efforts of, from our countries to to produce information through the National Forest and Soils. Inventories. I think that uh, supporting this, this kind of of collaboration would be a key element to to fulfill the commitments of, of the uh, enhanced transparency transparency framework under the the Paris Agreement. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you, Jose Armando. Um, we can clearly see how um, collaborative efforts and forest data can bring great results. And, and many countries are now on the way to adopt or boost this approach even more. Um, and my next question is related to the same line of thought, but from a donor's perspective, um, and will be directed at Pascal again. Um, Pascal, drawing from your experience, um, what success factors have you observed for fostering collaboration and synergy um, among various stakeholders to, to advance transparency efforts um, in the forestry sector or well, and beyond? Over to you. Thank you very much, Maria, for the question. Um, the first that come to my mind, uh, having listened with uh, what uh, Jose Armando was saying, and also Julian before, um, I think if we speak about global uh, global level, uh, I think the convening power of the organizers is very, very important. And that's why FAO is our uh, partner in this. I think it's very important uh, um, because we can build on what FAO has been doing so far in terms of forest data already, you know, and this capacity uh, to work with national authorities directly. So I think the convening power is a, is a, is a factor of success uh, at, for the, this kind of project approach at global, at global level. And then if we go <clears throat> deeper in the uh, at national level, uh, it, I think the multi-stakeholder approach is very, very important. Uh, this is uh, this is obvious, but uh, uh, it's, and it's not only a success factor; it's a condition of success. So, but it, I think it it worth mentioning because it's uh, it's it's key uh, for for the success. Now, because it's this uh, kind of uh, multi-stakeholder approach uh, uh, must include a wide range of stakeholders, such as government uh, officials, such as academia, civil society, and other actors to that are uh, able to boost international and technical capacities for the ATF compliance. Uh, this kind of approach facilitates the exchange of climate-related data at economy-wide level. Uh, sector information comes from different sources, and the national, nationally uh, designed authorities for climate change, usually it's Ministry of Environment, don't have necessarily access to all this information. No? So this is why uh, it's, uh, it, it's key. And also there is another aspect that uh, with this approach is the fact that the CBIT is not the only one uh, funding uh, window for the international cooperation to enhance climate information systems. No? So uh, this kind of approach also help build the necessary bridges with the international cooperation ecosystem working on complementary initiatives. No? So I think it's very, uh, it's very important. Another, another aspect also, the success factor, which is related to the, this, the, the last one I mentioned, is to have already uh, inter-institutional arrangements in place. And when we don't have it already, actually it's uh, usually a part of the project itself that we support at national level. Uh, it's important for, um, again, for to, to exchange information uh, among relevant uh, stakeholders uh, to ensure better reporting of uh, GAG inventories and mitigation actions in the forest sector. Uh, this arrangement includes sectors such as Ministry of Forestry, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Environment, and other institutions that are related to, 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 to land use and, and forest in general. Then another success factor that we have uh, we have noticed in our project is the existence of portals, online platforms, uh, for the exchange and management of climate information for domestic and international reporting purposes. Uh, with the CBIT, some countries have created or enhanced their national climate transparency platforms uh, with specific forest modules to manage their forest relation information. And this is also something that we have observed, uh, and it's, uh, it's important to for us to highlight. Um, also, uh, some specific agreements, in particular, um, drafting agreements with uh, local academia, uh, with such as MOU, for instance. No? Um, this facilitates capacity building formal programs for enhancement of climate information, including forest data, and the creation of specific uh, formal undergraduate or postgraduate programs with academia can support the sustainability over time, which is one of the key objectives of, of the Article 13, the sustainability over time of the capacities um, after considering the turnover of uh, government institutions. No? So it's very important because the capacity, it helps the capacity to, to stay uh, and, and, and take over when there is some, some important key changes in the, in the institutions. And maybe a last, uh, last uh, 
success factor that we have observed is uh, the knowledge sharing of best practices uh, via South-South cooperation. But this is what, what I begin to speak about with, uh, when I, I mentioned the convening power and, and what the work is FAO, FAO is doing at global and regional levels. No? It's very, very important that stakeholders from the global South can collaborate with each other uh, on, the, on the way that, that they address uh, the challenges posed by the, the ETF in the forest sector and work together on best adapted solutions to enhance their approach and data in the forest sector. So these are the key elements that uh, would, like, I would like to, to highlight uh, as success factors that we have observed in the project that we received. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pascal, for your insights. Um, we can um, see that opportunities are indeed many, um, but it's also it is also important to acknowledge the multitude of challenges and um, that countries are and other partners uh, often face. And we would love to hear from Kenya for uh, and from Peter for his invaluable experience in developing um, a national forest monitoring at the country level. Um, if the connection allows, Peter, let us know if you can hear us. Um, loud and clear. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are perfect. Um, you can, yeah. I will. Yes, wow. we can hear you very well. Thank you very much. Um, I will. Um, I will. I will combine my two questions. The first one that I um that I wanted to ask you in the first round of questions, and the second one, if that's okay with you, and please feel free to sort of extend your the time of your replies. Yeah. Um, could you, uh, Peter, could you elaborate on how the National Forest Monitoring System and its data are helping um, Kenya and the Kenya's Forest Service um, to fulfill its mandate um, and how forest data is effectively utilized within the country? And if you can also mention the opportunities and challenges that you face in, um, in, in gathering and sharing data um, um, for enhancing the 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 NFMS uh, to better serve Kenya's forests and climate goals. Um, over to you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, I want to share the background of uh, the journey we have traveled, particularly when it concerns the National Forest Monitoring System uh, since 2013 up to date. And a number of partners and the stakeholders have been with us to help us uh, in uh, coming to where we are. Now, uh, our national forest monitoring system, I want to say from the outset that uh, it's not a Kenya Forest Service um, system, but it is designed to cover the entire forest sector in Kenya. And therefore, a number of uh, stakeholders and partners and institutions, both government and uh, non-government, are part and parcel of it, all it is envisaged that they will become part and parcel of it. We have had um, support from um, uh, the government of Australia, particularly on uh, coming up with our lad use lad cover maps and uh, what we are calling the SLIC. SLIC simply means system for lad based emission estimation in Kenya. We've had partners like uh, the government of Finland who helped us particularly on uh, coming up with um, uh, a model or a proposal for national forest uh, inventory. And uh, we've also had the, the government of Japan through JICA in helping us particularly in uh, getting ready to submit our forest reference level to UNFCCC and uh, also the UK government through UK Pact and the FAO through IMPLES, who have also come in to help us improve on our national forest monitoring system. So a number of uh, partners, UNDP, UNEP, USAID, UNRED program, all that, they have participated in one way or the other to make us be where we are today. Now, uh, we drive our mandate as Kenya Forest Service from Forest and Conservation and Management Law, our Act number 2016, which gives us the mandate and gives us the functions that we are supposed uh, to do. And some of those functions that we, we, we are supposed to, to undertake 
uh, are around issues to do with the conservation, uh, management, preservation and protection of public forests. And sometimes we add all arid tree resources. And uh, some of the functions that relate to uh, national forest monitoring system, we are supposed every two years to prepare a forest status report for the minister concerned with forestry to be submitted to our parliament. And we are also supposed to prepare a forest resources assessment report every five years and submitted to our parliament. Another function that we, we are supposed to do is to develop, maintain, and regularly update a geographic information system database of all forests in Kenya. And therefore, looking at that mandate and the functions that we have been given, uh, it is critical that um, we have a national forest monitoring system that can be able to help us and that can be a repository of the information and data needed for information and for decision making and for policy making. Uh, I want to say that uh, the NF, uh, National Forest Monitoring System, which we have designed and developed, has two, two areas. One is for monitoring, and the other one acts as forest information platform, which is actually a database. Now, we are supposed to use uh, the monitoring aspect to be able to monitor issues to do with the deforestation, issues to do with the um, uh, forest boundaries, issues to do with the forest health, including forest uh, species that are available. And uh, we, we are supposed to, 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 to use NFMS uh, to monitor virtually all sustainable forest management issues because they are all encompassed in NFMS. When it comes to uh, the, the, the forest information platform, the database. Now, this is the database that, uh, that we, we, we put in information, information concerning our land use, land cover maps and their changes. Then we use that information that is there in reporting, both uh, national reporting and international reporting. And uh, we, we refer mainly to the forest reference level, which is part of the National Forest Monitoring System, which is actually a baseline on the emissions that we are producing. And we want to monitor and see, are we doing well? Are we not doing well? And by how much? And through that, through the assessment of um, that uh, baseline, we are able to see whether we can get resort-based uh, uh, financing from our various bodies that we have to help us also in the conservation and management of our forest. Or also what we call the, the national GHG inventory, which is a requirement. It is the national forest monitoring system that is very key in assisting our country to, to come up with that uh, inventory. And therefore, we want, without going to details, to acknowledge the great importance of a national forest monitoring system. Not only that, but we want to see our national forest monitoring system not necessarily doing Red Plus implementation, but we want to see a national forest monitoring system that can help the forest sector to make critical decisions on management, on policies that are made, and so on and so forth. Because forests play a critical role, not, not, not necessarily on climate change as much as it is important, but the connectivity and the critical role played by the forest within the, the economy of this country. Look at agriculture. It depends heavily on forest. Look at manufacturing. It also depends heavily on forest. Look at energy. Look at water. Look at wildlife. Look at tourism. Look at 
uh, I mean, all these sectors that are very critical in our GDP have one role, one relationship or the other with the forest. And therefore, critical information so that decisions and critical decisions can be made is very, very, very important. Uh, I also want to say that uh, forests and the management and protection and everything involving conservation is not one institution affair, but it will require all hands on the deck so that we are able to succeed. And through that, therefore, you're supposed to have a system that can speak to all these other players and be in a position where they can receive information, they can access this information, and they can also bring in this information if possible. And therefore, we, we look at a sector that uh, as much as Kenya Forest Service plays a role in public forest, but we also have community forests. We also have private forests. We also have a forest that are purely on farmlands. And therefore, we need to have collaboration and a system that is able to answer to all these people uh, so that we are able to, 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 to have a very useful uh, system. The other thing is that, again, because of that um, wide space, a lot of institutions will come in and therefore they also need to know their stake as far as this system is concerned. Each one of these uh, stakeholders or institutions or agencies may have a system or some system, but we would want to have that system put it together to form this major national uh, system. We, we want to talk about also to say something that, uh, that has also been an innovation. We are calling it Forest Alert System which is very useful between us at the headquarters and our field people, such that uh, if something happens using the remote sensing and GIS tools, there is an alert that can be able to alert using a normal uh, mobile phone that either a community member or our ranger or our forester can be able to be alerted in good time that something has happened, either good or bad, and they are able to attend to it as soon as possible. That system, or that tool, again, finds its, uh, itself in our national forest monitoring system. Maybe it be due to time, I can go to the second question. Yes, right. if, you, if you could um, um, maybe discuss uh, briefly the challenges and opportunities that you see um, while developing and gathering and managing forest data. Okay, thank you. Of, of course, where we have, the far we have come, a number of challenges have been experienced and uh, we see also what we need to do to arrive at the, 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 the goal, the end goal that we have. And um, being uh, forests are just forests and they are jungle and there are people working there. And one of the challenges is infrastructure Im improvement. We would want to see a situation where our system, which we are calling NFMS, is uh, be able to be felt right to the center of our forest, right into the, uh, the smallest unit, which we call a forest station. And for our rangers, maybe even to where we call a bit, where we have the the, the rangers taking care of a small unit to patrol. That calls for quite some um, improvement in infrastructure in terms of um, power connectivity, in terms of internet uh, connectivity, in terms of uh, maybe housing aspects so that our people can also have houses and so on. Maybe in terms of uh, having the, 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 the mobiles, like the phones, the computers, and so on. So that is one of the challenges that we have because we would want to have a system that answers right to the smallest unit of our management. The other one is um, uh, what we, we, we are saying that uh, we have many institutions that are involved in uh, the National Forest Monitoring System. And these institutions, both government and government have interests. And therefore we have to have what we call institutional arrangement, such that they will know this 
this is our role, and this is our take, and this is our stake in NFMS. Now, to bring this institution to such kind of an agreement, it may appear very easy, but it is a challenge. We require uh, that kind of um, uh, uh, capacity to be brought in so that people are able to agree on what they need to do. The other uh, thing is um, the National Forest Monitoring System, as far as we are concerned where we are in Kenya, is not known. It's only known by technical people, myself and uh, a few people. But we would want to have a system that has been um, discarded to the ground such that community forest association members are able to understand what is a NFMS and how to use it. And therefore, sensitization and creation of awareness is very, very, very uh, critical in this man, in, in, in this um, in, the, in this issue. And um, there is also the issue of um, sustainability of data, because we are in the process of getting data into the system and the new technology is coming, new information is coming. We have one thing that has been hampering this, particularly for us, because we haven't yet carried out what we call national forest inventory. What we call, what we have is a country data. You know, a few data here and there, but would want a very comprehensive national forest inventory that can uh, be very useful when it comes to uh, national forest monitoring system. I think I would reach there with the, the challenges. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, thanks for sharing your experiences um, and expertise with us. Um, one of the crucial points that you mentioned was about the, the importance of sustainability and continuity of, of this data of efforts, um, um, even after, I guess, projects end. Um, and um, I, I would like to focus on this aspect a little bit more and direct a related question at FAO now, the final question of the panel uh, discussion. Uh, Julian, from your experience, um, could you tell us how um, FAO can leverage its global network and partnerships to ensure that the, to ensure the sustainability and long-term impact of capacity building efforts and, and national force monitoring efforts. Over to you. Thank you, Maria. Yes, a great discussion. I mean, I, I think um okay. Let, I'll, I'll describe a few of the of the other big programs that FAO has. And I, I think Sibit Forest is a great example, and Pascal spoke to this a bit about how we can use a, you know, a very targeted investment to bring together a lot, of, a lot of different national level work, regional level work and global level work and link that to the ETF. So I'll speak in a moment to some of the other big processes that are going on in FAO and how, how a really important global project like Civet Forest that Rossio will all introduce us to next can help bring all that together and really help countries in this critical year prepare for their BTRs, right? It's really the year of the Enhanced Transparency Framework. So it's the perfect moment to, to highlight the um, Civet Forest Project and, and really get things moving. So as FAO, I mean, we've been around for 75 years and I think as we accumulate knowledge and build capacity in countries, we always, we always do it with a clear view on sustainability and, uh, you know, projects come and go, but, um, but it, we've been doing this for a while and, and some of the big processes that have been mentioned several times and, and we can leverage through a project like Sebit Forest is the Global Forest Resources Assessment, which has been run since 1948 and it engages 194 countries and territories. And I think it's, it's really powerful. And it was great to hear in the opening remarks how we really try to link this process to the Enhanced Transparency Framework. I think that's, that's an incredible opportunity. And, uh, and I think we're gonna be hearing much more about this in the coming years with the support of projects like the Civet Forest. So I'll put, in the, I'll put in the chat again, some links to the, to the Global Forest Resources Assessment, which is a big program of, of FAO and engages many countries and can help, we can use this network to disseminate information on the ETF and make sure that as countries are submitting to FAO for the FRA, they're also aligning that information with their ETF submissions um, for the forest sector. So I mean, it was really nicely summarized by Peter and Jose Armando. I mean, we've been trying to build for, for 10 years sort of sustainable national forest monitoring systems in countries. And this is the work of many different partners. 
because if countries have these um, systems in place, really, and they're, if they're institutionalized in the government, like Peter so nicely described, it really helps them manage forests much more effectively and also helps them report strong data to the international conventions like the, like the ETF, which is, which, is, which is going to happen this year. So, and actually you'll see at the bottom of our slide, a, a reference to another big program that we're running alongside um, Civet Forest called Aim for Forests. It's, it's accelerating innovative monitoring for forests. And through this project with support from the UK government, we are supporting many countries to really institutionalize the national forest monitoring system. So you can see how, as we're working with countries like Kenya and many others, we, at the national level, at the global level, a project like Civet Forest helps articulate that in the context of the ETF and link different processes together. I mean, we've heard it several times, but cross-sector collaboration is really key. And we've also heard that the Afolu sector and forests in particular are a big piece of the puzzle, right, for emissions and our efforts to reduce emissions. So another, another really nice initiative we host is called the Global Forest Observations Initiative, GFOI. And this is a, an approach that FAA often uses where we really try to create a collaborative platform amongst different partners. And we have, a, we have a big plenary every two years really focused on measurement reporting and verification of forest data. And through that platform, we also link to the ETF and, and link to the CIBIT forest processes. So there's a lot going on. I mean, the main message from FAO is that we try to link everything together the national, regional, and global level work, and really help the countries fulfill their international um, commitments under the ETF and share knowledge as, as we're doing today. So I'll put some links into the chat, but um, thanks so much. Back to you, Maria. Thank you, Julian. Um, your points actually provide, in a way, a perfect transition to our next um, webinar section, um, therefore, and um, for the sake of time, as we're running a little bit behind, we will conclude the panel discussion here, but please keep your questions coming through the um, Q&A uh, chat. Our panelists will be monitoring it up until the very end of the event today. Um, and um, a kind reminder as well to specify the name of the speaker you are um, directing a question to. Um, so with this wealth of a background uh, from the opening remarks and from the panel discussion, I'm happy to pass the ball to our next speaker who will present a new joint um, FAO, or, or rather the phase two of, um, of, a, an, uh, of an old <laughs> FAO Jeff uh, project aimed at tackling this, um, the challenges and opportunities that, um, that have been discussed by our panelists. Um, We're happy to have with us today Rocio condor Golet, um, a forestry officer at FAO, specializing in the enhanced transparency framework. Um, Rocio has dedicated over two um, decades to environmental science and forest ecology, particularly in measurement, reporting, and verification under the UNFCCC. Um, currently, Rocio is leading the Cibit Forest Global Project that has been mentioned several times today, which uh, she will present um, in a second. Uh, Rocio, the floor is yours. Can you hear me, Maria? Yes, we can hear you well. Thank you very much. I wait Pilar showing the screen. Okay. So uh, many thanks to all participants who are with us today. I will provide you with an overview of uh, Faust Jeff new CBIT forest project, including its past achievements and upcoming plans. What was the project born? We saw the need to build capacities on forest data transparency to foster stakeholder engagement. Transparent forest data empowers governments, academia, NGOs, private sector, local communities, international organizations, ensuring their participation in decision making and protecting their interests. Climate action, accessible forest monitoring data will support climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts. Attracting investments. Transparency attracts sustainable investors, stimulating economic growth in forest dependent regions. Research and innovation advancement. Open data fosters scientific innovation in ecology and biodiversity conservation. 
effective policy. Transparent forest data enhance policy making, ensuring decisions are evidence based and targeted for maximum impact. International collaboration. Transparency promotes global cooperation on issues like forest management and biodiversity conservation. How have we contributed towards forest data transparency in line with implementation of the enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement? CVAT Forest navigated the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic by exploring new opportunities, expanding its plans for virtual capacity development, knowledge sharing and raising awareness through products and events such as free e-learning courses, case studies on forest data transparency, massive open online course and webinars, all in multiple languages. Expanding the use of virtual modalities, strengthening participation in the initiative, in part due to the creation of incentives like earning a digital badge certification in newfound skills granted by the FAO eLearning Academy. The project boosted awareness of the importance of transparent and reliable data, as well as the steps needed to meet the requirements of the enhanced transparency framework. The success of the CBT Forest Project is especially marked by its engagement, which strongly encouraged participation from women, indigenous peoples, and local communities. Virtual engagement from different stakeholders saw the project contribute to global awareness of forest data transparency and the important role forest information plays in climate action. The project promoted inclusive learning by giving an equal opportunity to access, contribute to, and benefit from transparency-related knowledge products to almost 10,000 individuals, of which 39% were women. Notably, women led many activities and discussion in pilot countries, sharing their opinions even in instances where female participation was low. The project was particularly gender sensitive with project staff participating in training in gender and conducting separate analysis to adopt a gender responsive approach to forest monitoring. As a result, female participation was considered high for an overall male dominated field. Outreach products garnered significant participation with practitioners and experts accessing outreach and dissemination products over 170,000 times. We hope the lessons learned from the first phase of the project will encourage individuals and countries to continue learning and collaborating. Check out our publication, which shares all the experience gained on forest data transparency so far. Building on its lessons learned and achievements, we are now presenting the second phase of CBIT Forest. This new project will continue to emphasize the significance of transparent forest data as a fundamental component of effective climate action and sustainable forest management. The launch of the CBIT Forest Project, supported by the GEF, aims to bolster the capacity of countries in effectively and transparently monitoring and reporting forest data. The project will directly benefit at least 20 countries and more broadly, some 236 countries and territories that are part of the global network of national correspondents for the Global Forest Resources Assessment, FRA. The relevance, effectiveness, efficiency, impact and sustainability are enhanced by building on ongoing forest monitoring work in FAO's forestry division, internal and external networks, and globally available platforms. CBT Forest is connecting the dots to ensure that high quality knowledge and expertise is available and accessible to all. This new project will enhance the access and use of best available forest related data with outputs that will have a catalytic effect in moving forest data transparency by facilitating access to forest resource data through 
FAO's Global Forest Resources Assessment Platform with additional functionalities and transition toward flexible reporting with countries that are interested in sharing forest data more frequently. Networking, communication, and awareness raising with focal points from the different forest-related data collection and reporting processes. The active promotion of information exchanges among FRA national correspondents and UNFCCC national focal points could guarantee the availability of the latest forest resource data for the Biennial Transparency Reports under the Enhanced Transparency Framework, with the first submission due by 31st December 2024. If you want to follow FRA process closely, please subscribe to the newsletter. CBT Forest will also contribute with improvement of national forest monitoring systems by working with countries on forest data sharing, enhancing technical capacity of forest and climate stakeholders on available platforms, resources, and tools for forest-related data collection and analysis, sharing knowledge through networks of national forest inventories. We recognize the hurdles many countries face institutional and technical challenges in collecting and sharing comprehensive, reliable, and timely forest-related data. Our goal is to turn these challenges into opportunities for innovation and collaboration. This new project will continue to benefit transparency practitioners and experts of knowledge management activities by identifying, developing, and disseminating pre-existing knowledge products, as well as new set, implementing a comprehensive outreach and knowledge management strategy, and sharing project results with all. Project activities will work at the global, regional, and national levels. At the global level with open data dissemination platforms and virtual knowledge. We will continue to populate the food and agriculture microdata catalog with forest inventory data and making the global forest resources assessment platform accessible to all. The project will also implement global, free, online, multilingual facilitated courses. Stay tuned because in a couple of months we will launch the first one. At the regional level, we will connect forest actors cementing national forest inventory networks, which will contribute to forest data transparency. We will continue working with Armando Alaniz, who is leading the Latin American and the Caribbean network and facilitating a new network in Asia. At the national level, we will work with targeted countries from different regions on forest data sharing. Communication and knowledge sharing is a key element of the project to raise awareness of the importance of data collection and analysis, as well as dissemination for transparency in the forest sector. Check out our products along with our rebumped web page that we are launching today in English, French, and Spanish. Take a look. Let me close by thanking my FAO colleagues across teams, divisions, regions, countries our allies and resource partners who believe in the power of collaboration and the importance of forest data transparency. Thanks for your attention and back to you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Rocio, very much for this overview. Um, it is great to see that the project and the efforts to enhance capacities related to forest data transparency continue. Um, at the, at the, um, that there are so many uh, so many partners involved as well. Um, I see that our colleagues are putting all the relevant links in the chat, um, as well as the project, as you mentioned, recently revamped website that actually has contact details of the project in case any of our attendees has the questions or um, collaboration requests, so Rosie and her team. Um, we are almost at the end of uh, this session. Uh, thank you all for your active participation today. It was a pleasure moderating this, uh, this important discussion. And we want to assure everyone that the webinar recording and the presentation by Rocio 
will be shared with um, all the participants, um, attendees and absentees in the next couple of days and published on the events page for future reference as well. Um, we would um, also like to express our gratitude to the GEF, um, Aim for Forest Initiative and the Global Forest Observations um, Initiative for their collaboration in organizing this webinar. And a big, big thank you to all the panelists and speakers for being here with us today. Um, now to conclude this session, um, I would like to hand over the mic to Julian Fox for, for the closing remarks on behalf of FAO. Um, Julian, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Maria. Sorry, everybody. You're going to hear my voice quite a bit today <laughs> because our deputy director could not be with us. But yeah, look, thank you so much, everybody, to the panelists and, and the attendees. It was I, I found it really fascinating. And I, I mean, I talk about this every day. So uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, yeah, I'd like to extend a special thanks to the speakers who have provided really great insights from Kenya, from Mexico, on the important role of transparent forest data in really shaping policies and practices that promotes sustainability and com combat climate change on the ground. And, um, and I'd also like to thank our attendees for, for engaging and highlighting the value of transparent forest data. I mean, really, our hope is that today's discussion serves as, a, as an inspiration to take further steps toward making all our forest data transparent, um, connecting the dots between different reporting processes as we've been discussing, and really make, making sure that countries are able to have good forest data for their BTRs, which are urgently due this year, in fact. We had a really diverse group of experts from Kenya, Mexico, as I said, and particularly huge thanks to the United Nations Framework on Climate Change, UNFCCC, have been a fantastic partner in CIBIT Forest Phase 1, and we really look forward to continuing that strong collaboration in this phase of CIBIT Forest Phase 2. And in particular, as Maria acknowledged, the Global Environment Facility, without whose support we would not be able to host webinars like this. So... Basically, in summary, transparency builds trust and accountability and encourages countries to increase their climate ambition over time. If countries are able to measure and monitor and manage what they have, that allows them to take actions to, to increase ambitions. And I think we all need ambition um, at, the, at the moment we find ourselves in globally. As we heard, the ETF assesses countries' progress towards implementing their nationally determined contributions, which is a crucial aspect for global efforts to achieve the Paris Agreement. This new project will support the ETF framework by accelerating the transparency of forest data for climate action and linking all the dots that we have on forest data for different national, regional and international processes. We'll use, as Rocio so nicely presented, knowledge sharing events such as today, awareness raising and a lot of capacity development. So stay tuned for a lot more coming from this project. I mean, it was born as a partnership between FAO and the Global Environment Facility, but we really see this as a, as a strong partnership and we would like to engage everybody in this effort in this critical ETF year, which is 2024. I urge you all to carry on um, discussing how we can keep enhancing forest data transparency and support our countries in, in their BTR work um, this year, a critical year for the Climate Convention. I mean, forest data transparency is really a key to sustainable forest management, as we heard from Peter and Jose Armando, and also for making sure that we're able to be accountable and track our progress against our commitments under the Paris Agreement. So thank you all so much for joining us today. I need to wrap up. Stay safe. I wish you a great evening, morning, or afternoon. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody.